Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Both. That is Derek Young here on this Tuesday where we get back-to-back -back days where we've been able to hear from some of the K-State players and coaches now. Uh, yesterday, it was Chris Kleiman, gave basically 30 minutes and a lot of insight and info. And then you could kind of confirm some of that info today when Connor Riley, the offensive coordinator and offensive line coach, spoke. Uh, and he was surrounded by players then that also – we're able to talk a little bit today. So strictly offensive guys that we kind of got uh, some notes from. There's even a point where I think it was you, D.Y., you tried asking a question uh, to Avery about wanting to know a little bit about defensive guys, and he just started talking about more offensive guys to you. So uh, offense was on the mind today uh, in Veneer. And Hey, Cat fans, before we go any further, I want to remind you, if you want to join your Wildcats in Ireland as they kick off the 2025 football season against Iowa State and the Aer Lingus College Football Classic, game tickets can be secured now through a travel or hospitality package. All-inclusive travel packages include premium game tickets, luxury hotel accommodations, an exclusive K-State welcome experience, and more. Game day hospitality packages include premium in-stadium hospitality with food and drinks and premium game tickets. Don't miss out on the trip of a lifetime. Book your package now at cats2ireland.com. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. And uh, I guess we'll just start with some of your most notable takeaways because, I mean, it seems like over the last two days, Keegan Johnson might be the hottest name in K-State football. Yeah, I the I would say takeaways. I'll just kind of run through like a handful that come to mind, and then we can jump and go, maybe go a little bit more in depth on a, on a few of them to kind of prolong uh, the show and everything like that. But I would say you're talking about Connor Riley, basically sharing what he would view as a starting offensive line as of right now, um, and, and maybe some other guys that are in the mix still in the discussion and could still claim a job. Talk about their explosiveness on offense and what that looks like thus far, if it's the real deal or not. Like you said, the evolution of Keegan Johnson and he was, he was very, I would say upfront and transparent about some of the challenges and adversity that he went through a year ago. Obviously some of that to do with physical health. He said some of it, we know about some of it, we don't. So he basically just kind of, laid out a scenario where it was a very challenging year for him that he's looking to rebound from. But, you know, he basically said now's the time to stop talking about it and actually just go and do it. So I appreciated that from him. Our first time talking to Dylan Edwards probably didn't have a, a ton to say um, necessarily, but I appreciated when he said, yeah, I, I have a lot on my plate right now. Not only am I learning this playbook that I haven't really – been in until what June. Um, so I'm still grasping and trying to get my feet wet and have the game slow down for me and know where I'm supposed to stand, know where I'm supposed to run, all of this stuff. But not only am I doing running back, I'm going out wide a little bit, I'm moving around all over the place. I'm a kick returner and I'm a punt returner. He was asked about all of that, uh, if it was like drinking out of a water hose. And I, and I, there was one line that I thought encapsulated it the best when he said, This is what I asked for. So I appreciated that. It wasn't something that's intimidating him. Um, he realizes it isn't easy, but this is everything that he wanted to do. Probably one of the reasons why, you know, he goes and makes the, the, the transfer to begin with. And obviously to be close to Avery Johnson, which I thought, you know, for me with Avery Johnson, the thing that I took away is a, he seems blown away by Keenan Garber and Jacob Parrish, just like Chris Kleiman. And he says, if I have Keegan Johnson in man coverage, I'm going to go to him. So those were the two like high points there. Uh, Taylor Portier was more about nicknames. I think that guy's got like a nickname for everyone. So he was much more of an easygoing, lighthearted interview that I, I could appreciate for what it was as well. On brand yeah. for offensive linemen. Yep, because we got that what, the last few years with Noah Johnson and Hayden Gillum. So I think Taylor Portier is next in line, next in line there. And with DJ Giddens, obviously – um, that's going to be the most unique interview that anyone gets because he's probably the most lightly soft-spoken person that doesn't really divulge anything. You ask him what he likes. He says everything. You ask him who's good. Everyone, one of those things. But uh, I guess the one takeaway I would have there is that it's interesting to me that he still 
he basically said he still goes back and watches Deuce Vaughn highlights every single day so that he can continue to get better. Uh, yeah, well, first off, it's a, it's a good thing that Dylan Edwards handled a fire hose question better than Brent Venables a couple of years ago. Uh, there were no <laughs> lewd hand gestures or whatever else going on there. Uh, and yeah, I, I think honestly, the number one takeaway for me from the Avery stuff, in addition to like the individual guys, it's just like, you can tell that's a quarterback. You can tell that's your leader. And then I, I think everybody else, but we'll all specify with the two running backs and DJ and Dylan Edwards, like it just, both of them seem to, to be up there today with the mindset of like, I'm just trying to, to get to work and finding a way to better myself in whichever way it needs to happen, which like you said for DJ Giddens is, is motivation there with looking at what Deuce Vaughn did. And for Dylan Edwards, it's still getting used to what he's going to be asked to do at K-State. And in addition to that, that he's being asked to basically do anything that involves touching the ball at K-State right now. Do you want to be running back? Do you want to be a receiver? Do you want to be a kick returner? He's having to do it all while also trying to still learn how to play in this offense. I want to be clear that this is not a criticism of the two. I appreciate everyone that is themselves, and I don't want them to try not to be themselves. So I have no problem when Dylan Edwards is up in front of a microphone or DJ Kins is up in front of a microphone, and I like the different personalities and approaches and you know just different dispositions you get from all these different players. But and and again, this is not a criticism. But you know the vibe you get when when Dylan Edwards and DJ Gins were up there were both were basically like the Marshawn Lynch thing, right? We're here because we <laughs> yes. don't want to get fined. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were both there because they had a job to do and uh, they were going to do it and get in and get out. Uh, Connor Riley also spoke today. He had various things to kind of give the lowdown on what was going on with K State and his offense this upcoming year. And one of the things that's been talked about a lot. Uh, over the last couple of days is Keegan Johnson, and he had a lot of praise for the uh, second-year receiver at K-State. He spent time at Iowa before coming to Manhattan, but certainly expectations are growing for Keegan Johnson. Where I see a ton of growth is in his confidence, and that confidence comes with just being in the program and understanding what to expect on a day-to-day -day basis. But I absolutely admire the young man, and I heard you guys talking about his ability, but uh, – the type of kid that he is, is, uh, is fantastic and uh, really glad that he's with us. This feels like one of those things where, yes, in the offseason, everybody is the best player they've ever been and all this other stuff. But I think you can kind of get an understanding and an idea when it seems like everybody has something to say about a certain guy that it's the real deal. So like you mentioned, Keenan Garber and Jacob Parrish, they got – mentions from Avery Johnson and Chris Kleiman, two and different Connor guys Riley. with yeah. two totally different agendas when they go and talk to people. And there was praise there. We, we talked about it at big 12 media day when we started saying, these are the, the guys that we're hearing more about on the younger end of receivers. It, it starts to add up the Keegan Johnson stuff starts to add up where Chris Kleiman, Avery Johnson, Connor Riley, all have had these very high praise type of words for him and uh, it, it leads me to believe, even more so than yesterday, that the Keegan Johnson stuff might be real. And part of that may just have to do with the way the offense is going to be set up this year and who he's going to have at quarterback. Yeah, and, and you, I would just say this. It was like this last year, too, if I recall pretty well. And it would have came together then, too, if he had just not gotten hurt and then lost all of his confidence because I think two of those things, because it's tough when you're hurt and you feel like the team goes on without you and, and, and then you never find your footing and then you question whether you're good enough. He's had a full off season to recover from that, um, probably more so mentally than physically and regain that confidence again and not question yourself again because I believe he was the best wide receiver throughout all of last off season as well. So for me, it's as simple as, if he's healthy, and this is what Chris Kleiman said yesterday, now I totally understand what he's saying. If he's healthy, he's great. Yeah, okay. So one other thing that I, I wanted to throw in here that uh, was just kind of, I don't know if it was a throwaway comment, but it was something that was just kind of quick and mentioned, uh, and this this has to do more so with quarterbacks. Were you surprised at all to hear 
Uh, Connor Riley say that this is probably the closest backup quarterback competition they've had since yeah. they've been at K-State. And the language was most legitimate, I think, actually is what he said, most legitimate. Yeah. So, like, it does, like, also shed light. And, yeah, sometimes we have position battles that yeah. are not necessarily – position battles and this one's legitimate like yeah the, the word choice there is interesting yeah i'm pretty surprised that would to me suggest that taquan roberson um learning on the fly might not be his thing and remember he wasn't here for spring ball uh quarterback it's you got a lot a lot more to absorb a lot more to consume so learning on the fly maybe not his thing or and maybe it's and or jacob canoe taking yeah. the next step forward too well, we saw we saw the the clip that K State posted yesterday with the ball that Jacob Canoe threw. So yeah, uh, maybe it's a little bit of both. But I thought that was interesting, not only for this year, but also another illustration. If anybody else needs more evidence of how talented Avery Johnson is, is that you know we we did all this hemming and hawing last year about oh you know it kind of seems like based on the way they're talking that Avery Johnson's probably he, he's probably going to have a real shot at being the the second quarterback it makes it seem like they basically were decided day one of fall camp last year. Yeah. Avery's going to be our number two guy. Like this isn't a real battle between him and Jake Rubley. And they probably decided that the day he committed. Yeah, that's probably true too. Uh, that's probably a good point. All right. So in addition to Keegan Johnson, uh, Connor Riley also had some things to say about DJ Giddens because look, he's, he's been pretty dominant when he's been the guy at running back for K state, but he keeps getting better. And, uh, Obviously, he's a, a different personality than some of the other players that you'll encounter. Yes. Yeah, DJ is doing a great job. And one thing with being leaders is you can't ask young people to be something that they're not. And just like I can't try to be Colin Klein, I can't try to be so-and-so, I've got to be Connor Riley. And... Otherwise, kids will see that. So we have seen, and throughout the course of the summer, him continue to be that leader. But we all know DJ, you know, when he gets turned, I believe, um, it is uh, uh, not maybe nearly as emotional. But the way that he practices, the way that he conducts his business, and the way that he supports the guys out there are the leadership qualities that I'm seeing him continue to grow with. So they don't seem to have any concerns about DJ Giddens in terms of, you know, other than carrying the football, which he's really good at, but you're also needing to be a leader at times. And this is a team that for K-State, you're looking around and it's a, guy, a bunch of guys that either don't have a ton of experience or they're really young or both. And DJ Giddens is really probably the, the guy with the best amount of experience plus talent and consistency over the last you know handful of years on this roster, do you have any concerns about leadership on the K-State offense this year when you consider everything else that's going on, where you're going to have essentially two voices directing the offense in Connor Riley and Matt Wells. Connor Riley's never done that before. Avery Johnson has only started one football game as a quarterback. You've got a lot of young guys out there, and then some of the guys that are older may not be as vocal, like DJ Giddens, who Connor Riley did just voice uh, plenty of trust for, but any concern on how that might impact K State this year? No, I. Well, here I'll put it this way. So it's a little bit twisted the way I see this, but experience maybe there is not a lot of experience on this team. DJ Giddens has some of it, but like you said, not necessarily all that vocal. Jaden Jackson, not really a ton of experience, to be quite honest. Dante Sivas, never been to K-State. Jace Brown, not a ton of experience. Keegan Johnson, because of how last year went, not a ton of experience at K-State. Garrett Oakley, not a ton of experience at K-State. DJ Gins, yes, but quiet. Dylan Edwards, not at K-State. Avery Johnson, light on experience. Some of the offensive line that will play, light on experience. But Carl Wills has been there, right? Uh, Taylor Porte has been there. Hadley Panzer has been there. Easton Kilty's no experience at K-State. What I would say is, so the experience is kind of where you'd maybe draw a question, but not the maturity. Keegan Johnson, very mature. Very, very mature. So I don't run into a problem there. Dante Cephas, very mature. I don't run into a problem there. Panzer, mature. 
right? Portier, very mature. Um, DJ Giddens, you know, he he's, he's mature. He knows how to go about his business. Yeah, he might be the most mature guy on the team because he, he comes yeah. off like, uh, you know, a curmudgeon sometimes when everybody's having fun. He's just like, yeah. just here to do my him. job. Let's I go. I was just say his maturity has probably come a long way. And now he knows how to go about his business the right way when at one time he didn't. And obviously he picked up those habits and routines from Deuce Vaughn, like we alluded to earlier. Avery Johnson, he might be the most mature 19-year-old, whatever he is, that we've come across in, in, in covering college sports. So I I should have a, a question mark, but I don't just because the maturity is there. Yeah. All right, so the last thing that I have here in terms of audio from Connor Riley that is a significant update for most is he kind of gave uh, an, a good idea and really more than I, you would expect sometimes on transparency with the offensive line and how it's lo looking. We talked about it yesterday with Chris Kleiman's comments like, okay, you can kind of start to piece it together. Connor Riley basically just gave it to everybody up front today. He said, here are the five. Here are two guys that are equally as good as those five. And then here's what else we need behind them. So here is Connor Riley giving an update on the offensive line depth. Right now, you know, there's seven guys to me that are in the mix for starting position. Okay. And if you were to go um, left to right, you'd look at uh, Kilty, Panzer, Hecht, um, Taylor Poitier, and Carver Willis. All of those guys, with the exception of Hecht, have really starting experience, which when you lose three to four starters is kind of odd. Um, and then the sixth and seventh, John Pastore is doing really well. And I believe Andrew Langang has had the best camp that he's had thus far. And his versatility is phenomenal. You know, it's, it's, he can bounce out, he played a little bit of left tackle today, can play right guard, he's played right tackle. And then when we were in a half line drill, I said, get your ear in there and play some center. So when you look at, and I don't want to make comparisons of players, but when you look at the versatility of a Cooper Beebe, his versatility is is even more because of him playing the, the center position. All right, what did you make of getting to hear from the offensive line coach about the offensive line and, and where that might be going? Well, Cooper Beebe's playing center for the Cowboys now, so uh, uh, let's, let's, let's not sell him short, right? Um, the one position that he didn't play in college. Not a not a huge shock. I, I thought Andrew Lyon game might be in that first unit. I've kind of talked about that for a month. Um, I, I thought I might go that way. It's not yet. It's at, we have Hadley Panzer at left guard and Taylor Portier at right guard. I, I bet it stays that way. And they do, I will say, in terms of offensive line, they really lean heavily on longevity and experience. And that would give Taylor Portier certainly the edge there. And I do think Easton Kilty is definitely the left tackle. As I said yesterday, like I know Chris Kleiman's like, well, it's 50 50 with he and John Pastore. Connor Riley paints a little bit of a different picture. I, I was thinking it was more along the lines of how Connor Riley put it, just because everything that we've seen in practice since what March has suggested that Kilty will be the guy at left tackle. And it really hasn't ever steered from that whatsoever. I think John Pastore is going to be really good. I just think that he's probably that first or second guy off the bench right now, which at Kansas State, that guy still plays, to be clear. So he's going to have a role um, now that he's healthy. Um, so we'll see how that goes. With the Andrew Line Gang, um, obviously that's kind of like having a sixth starter at this point, the way I see it, especially if he truly is having his best training camp of his career. Um, and maybe he does crack the story lineup at some point. Like Carl Riley said, those five of the five now, but we have seven in the mix. So he's still in the mix, could end up a starter, whether that be game one, game four, game eight. Remember, it was a halfway through or a little over halfway through. Then he saw Carter Willis kind of grab that right tackle position away last year from Christian Duffy, but they both played. It wouldn't shock me if that's how right guard goes a bit with Lang Gang and Taylor Portier, but guess what? Injuries happen too, right? Injuries happen at every position. They'll probably happen along the Kansas State offensive line. Andrew Lang Gang, is the perfect recipe for when an injury goes down because of the versatility that Connor Riley just shared. Because regardless of where they get hurt on the line, they can stay just as strong uh, But by just inserting Andrew Lange wherever that happens because he can play just about any position. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. And I, I think K-State's in a good spot here. And, and 
honestly, they've been pretty blessed if you think about it the last couple of years and how they've been able to keep guys healthy on the offensive line. They've been pretty consistent and, you know, they, they make it seem like they want to rotate more in this upcoming year uh, and just keep guys more fresh, which is important because really, I mean, one of the guys that they're going to rely on this year, Taylor Poitier, he's been about the only offensive lineman that has dealt with a, a lack of health over the last couple of years. So, It'll be interesting to see how uh, things develop there as the the fall continues. But so far, so good for K-State. And and again, I think this is just, uh, there's a lot of good things happening for K-State right now. The the feelings seem to be pretty strong. And I think Connor Riley and Matt Wells, there isn't any indication at the moment that uh, that relationship is going poorly and that K-State is probably going to be able to navigate and, and do some pretty good things with those two guys leading the offense. Yeah, I have no uh, no concerns whatsoever. I thought it interesting today that Connor Riley says, from a pass game standpoint, we will look probably quite a bit different because conceptually we're different now that Matt Wells has had his input into that phase. Yeah, well, uh, it'll, be, it'll be fun to see when it all comes together. 25 days from today now uh, is when kickoff will be, and we'll have more throughout – the month of August in the buildup to kick off because we're going to get to hear from everybody uh, that you want to hear from with K-State football. That includes next week going to get some of the defensive coaches, uh, actually all the defensive coaches next week we will get to hear from either on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, and then on m- the following Monday, the 19th, is when Matt Wells is scheduled to go uh, and all the other offensive coaches. So then at that point, we're going to – get the other side of the story and it'll be a nice way to book in things because uh, then they'll just start heading into a normal week of preparation for kickoff. So that will do it for us today. We will be back here tomorrow. If you want more on the cats or anything that was said today at the press conferences, head over to on three, find kstateonline.com and we've got you covered. You can watch every player and Connor Riley press conference from today. You can get the rapid recap from drew. If you, you need it in a text form, to help you along with everything and plenty of other things from Drew, DY, and everything going on over on the foundation, our message board as well. So that'll do it for us today. For Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. We're out of here. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.